Why do so many artists hate making content? We're going to talk about that today, and it's going to be a real conversation that's going to be helpful for artists that are already making content and they're doing well at it, but they still hate the feeling of it. And it's also hopefully going to be productive for artists who hate it and just don't do it. They just don't get it. That's the purpose of this convo. But first, we need to start with this clip. Trigger warning, by the way, <laughs> this conversation might strike some nerves, but the point is to be helpful, not hurt. And, you know, y'all let us know in the comment section what y'all think as well. Check out this clip and we're going to get right into it. Why do we dread making content as artists? I don't understand why artists fight. Another way of expressing their creativity. Fans, they don't give a fuck. The artists are so entitled and they don't want to hear from us, the marketers, right? The music execs, any of that stuff, right? Start paying attention when you see like artists complain about things. Look at the comments. Fans don't give a fuck because they are working jobs that they don't want to work to get somewhere that they want to be. And you're like, you're doing something in the bucket of what you're supposed to want to be. And you're not willing to post some videos mm. to have a career I'm working at a bank. I'm working at McDonald's. Like, go fuck it. All right. This is the statement. I stand on this statement. However, there were a lot of great points that artists made. And I want to acknowledge that there were some great points that artists yeah, made. Yeah, some good points. But some of these points came from misunderstanding where I'm coming from, where I know you're coming from as well when we have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's first start here. Number one, when I'm saying this, I just want to put it on Front Street, make you guys aware that a lot of your complaining or the stances that you position as something that you shouldn't have to do comes off to complaining to your normal fan base, mm -hmm. all right? To your normal fan base, oftentimes what you're doing is a luxury, all right? Being an artist is a luxury to the regular worker, mm -hmm. right? So I just want to put that on y'all's table because that's really one of the bigger points I was making in this clip. This one, like we're about to get into conversation uh, <laughs> like of the content and how y'all should feel about it, et cetera. But I just know, I just want y'all to know that y'all aren't doing y'all sales favors when you're talking on your primary platforms for your fans to consume, to see it that way. Yeah. And I, I think they're going to see, especially once we get into the comments, like y'all to see, man, like Sean was making the argument from a fan perspective. A lot of people were making arguments back from the art perspective. And we've talked so many times about how those are just two different planes of thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like the, to, to your point, the average music fan isn't 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 thinking about it from an artist's brain because they they barely know what goes in on this side of it. They just see what they see and what they don't see. You know what I'm exactly. saying? <laughs> like, exactly. So let's start here. Oh. A question got asked based on this statement one person said tell a chef to make content Ooh. this is the biggest misconception that artists have when it comes to content and marketing they think it's a them thing mm -hmm. and i always say personalizing stuff can actually make you miss the bigger bigger picture one are there chefs you can you can instagram chef <laughs> and you'll probably find plenty of chefs making content yeah you find people doing tutorials on TikTok, making content for recipes and things like that, right? Yeah, you see niggas accidentally become chefs out for doing that. Right, that type of content. Exactly, and I get your point. You're trying to say, hey, a chef is a craft person. There's someone who who fi finds what they do to be an art form. Many chefs are that, right? But now we got to think about the marketplace. Y'all think that it's just you. Y'all don't really realize what we go through because we don't complain on our side in that way. Man, bro. Y'all don't, bro. Do y'all think that business people don't complain about making content? That's what I'm saying, bro. Marketers back in the day used to just run like newspaper ads and that was it. Yeah. A marketer <laughs> like would not have to be a front facing person. There's yeah. a lot of business people yeah. that actually would actually rather not be known at all. Yeah. But they now have to make content just to compete with the oversaturated marketplace that we live in because it's so easy to start a business, just like it's so easy to create content and create music these days. People are literally creating content in every single vertical, not necessarily because they want to, but because that is how I get identified. Mm -hmm. That is how I create business. And you don't see it as much from the old industry, people who are lasting and they're um, connected to these big corporate entities. Mm -hmm. No. 
right? But most of the new people that are popping up and building businesses, bruh, they're creating content to stand out among those old companies that already have leverage. Yeah, 100%, bro. It's like, if you don't believe it, because you said something important, bro. Every vertical has had to do it. If you don't believe that, think of a job, think of a career path, think of a hobby, and go into TikTok and look it up and just watch yourself be amazed at how many people in that field are making content that maybe you weren't aware of because you weren't looking for that mm -hmm. particular thing. But they exist. The buckets exist. Bro, like... I think that I I think that artists feel like this is there this is overwhelming, right? It's another thing and I understand that completely. But it doesn't help when you don't at least depersonalize it from saying it's just an artist thing and the people are attacking the artist and mm -hmm. devaluing the art and realizing no, this is the marketplace and the era that you live in. Yes. That's yes. all that we're saying. It has nothing to do with the art or not. If we were 20 years ago, we wouldn't be like drop some content on social media. 20 years from now, who knows? We might not be saying drop some content on social media. Yeah. But what this is, <laughs> is a result of the fact that you don't have a record label, which means you have more responsibility for yourself as a business person, mm -hmm. right? And people who are creating content are just taking control of every variable they can to help themselves become successful and get seen. That's all this comes down to, right? Now, this is where I want to get to one of the good points that got made, though. Shout out to, I don't know how to say your name, but I'm going to try. We're going to put your IG on the screen and stuff. Mutetai or Mutetai. <laughs> Bro, I know I slandered your name, but shout out to you. This, this is an artist speaking, by the way. He has 614 followers. Uh, so this isn't uh, like, so he's not going crazy with the content. He's telling an honest artist's opinion. He said, marketing people who don't do art themselves will never understand the artistic side of things. <sighs> content and music are two different things and shouldn't be compared to one another. Music is art. Content creation is more PR than it is art. Now, there's two points to this, right? Content and music are two different things. They shouldn't be compared to anything, the same thing. One, I'm not comparing them, first and foremost. It's just like when I say, hey, people talk about love and money, right? Love and money are two separate things, and but people can try to conflate the two. They have nothing to do with each other. Great. Same thing with music and art, right? The art, in this case, is the product, and the marketing is how you get the product out there. Mm -hmm. People never say toothpaste and toothpaste ads are the same thing. No, we're not saying that at all. Mm -hmm. However, for an artist, there is a bigger responsibility to put your creativity and more of the art in your advertising or your creative because this is an extension of you. This is your brand no matter what. So there's a greater responsibility and you could, because it is just content, you could do it creatively and treat that as a form of art, which I prefer somebody like Tyler, the creator, which we did an episode recently on, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Where we talk about his personality. Everything he touched, for the most part, he puts his own brand and POV into, right? Which is why his marketing never feels like marketing, all right? That is what we're talking about. Yeah, and I mean, one, one I, I personally just really hate when artists try to make that, oh, you don't create art, so you don't understand art argument. I hate the argument so much, because one, so many things have artistic value to them other than visual art and musical art that gets created. Yep. And two, you know what I'm saying? There, there are some people who have built a very pristine and prestigious careers of being uh, art evaluators off of just knowing the artistic landscape and being someone that studies it. There's somebody there that doesn't create art that knows more about artistic creation than someone that is, is making it. Just, oh, especially some of the newer artists. A hundred percent. But you're like like Rick Rubin or somebody though. Yeah, exactly. Right? So I'm saying like like, and then they, uh, then they do it long enough that people start to look at them like an artist. Like an artist, yeah. <laughs> I just always hate that, bro. Like artists love to go. You don't make music, so how would you get it? So, but the 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 big thing, right, is the other thing I don't like about it is content creation is an art form when it's done well. Mm -hmm. um, there are very few content creators, maybe outside of the talking head creators, you can make an argument aren't being artistic, but there's an art to talking. So mm -hmm. even then, there's still some type of art. Uh, like public speaking is an art form. You know what I'm saying? Like there, mm -hmm. there, there, there's a very good reason on why the best orators are the best orators. So 
when you look at some of the best content creators in any vertical, they are being artistic. Yes. Nine times out of 10. There's, there's, it's not just like they just propped up a camera and, and shit just went. They had to be creative in ideas and understand people to stream together certain things. Like that shit is artistic. So it may not be fair. Well, I won't even say that. I, I think it is fair to compare content and art. Um, because content to me is just another variation of, of an art form. You know what I'm saying? It's a different way to express artistic ideals or your artistic ability. You know what I'm saying? And to say a content creator isn't an artist in my mind is almost like saying a filmmaker isn't an artist or, you know, like a videographer like isn't an artist. Content. Yeah, it's exactly. They're both a, a film. What is a movie but a two hour piece of content? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What is a movie but a three hour TikTok? You know what I'm saying? Like, Music is audio content. Music is so audio it is. content. It's all content. Content, and uh, the thing I think that gets, uh, it, it, there's always this underlying hate for exactly what you just said, right? It's, it's less about the comparison. I think more so hate towards the fact that music gets lumped into that bucket. But this is just a reality of like where we as consumers of media have been pushed to. Everything gets put into a 30 second video. Everything shows on 20 different streaming platforms, whether that be video or audio. How can I not see your music as content? Um, when this movie that I see as content, I had to pay $9.99 for a platform to get access to both. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So so I, I, I do think it is fair to compare them. And then, you know, you said this before, right? Like, And I, I want to add to the point that you made plenty of times, which is if the creativity stops at just the music, are you really creative? Damn. Right? Are you a musician or are you an artist? Exactly. Are you a musician or are you an artist? Because I would argue if the creativity only stops at the music, you are a one trick pony. Because if I cannot, and this is me. You better not, be a one trick pony than a one pony trick. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means, bro. I mean, I'm scared to even ask what that means. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's like, all right, you, you, one trick pony in the sense of like, okay, music is the vertical where, my creativity ends. And there was a point. And there still is a point. There are lots of very successful musicians out there. Yes. You know what I'm saying lots there of there are guitar players and, and, and keyboardists and mm-hmm. fucking harmonica is mm-hmm. that do their thing. We don't know who they are, but they're making money just simply being musicians. However, if they were to tell me I want to be an artist and they could not get past that parameter of only being creative in the music. I would make the same argument here. I'd be like, bro, look, man, you know, you're not really, you're not really showcasing to me well that your creativity can bleed into other areas. I hear you. I hear you tell me about how great you be at making shoes and designing schools and shit like that, but but I can't even let me see it in a 20 second video. Show me, show me that there's an inkling of a creative seed being planted here. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And if I can see that, I will from a fan perspective and sometimes a brand perspective, I will believe you in other aspects. You know what I'm saying? But it's it the reality of it is is that content is the new language that people speak and perceive to gauge creativity. Because most people at this point have at least attempted to make a piece of content. Everyone from your everyday artist to, to people on the corporate side. At this point, 2023 it's, it's very hard to find a person that has never made like one TikTok or one Instagram post. So now we all kind of damn near have an understanding of the process and what it takes. And the more you start to do content, which is why I even think the argument of, um, you know, saying content is an art is is only a, a comment that someone that hasn't tried to do it extensively can make. Mm. If you're a person that has attempted to make more than five videos, you know how much work goes into that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know how much how much thought goes into putting that together, let alone trying to make a video that that successfully hits to whatever degree. That's a whole nother skill set. So I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I'll look, I'll say this. And Mew, I'm just gonna call him Mew. Like he <laughs> made this artist made some really, really, really good points that we're gonna get to get to as well. I role. really want y'all to listen up because I think he's speaking for y'all and when y'all make y'all artistic arguments I would like y'all to approach him like he does we still got some pushback to some of them <laughs> but like they're really good because it is a necessary conversation and I think it's productive all around to have this conversation. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. We gotta interrupt you to let you know you can win $20,000 by submitting your music to 2 Lost 
dot com slash collab for the crown. We're looking for the best songs and we're partnering with Two Lost. So if you think you got some great music, if you think you got the goods, go to that site, twolost.com slash collab for the crown. Check out the instructions for the contest. Win up to $20,000 and make sure you put in no label when you create your profile on Two Lost so you can make sure you get three months completely free. That's twolost.com slash collab for the crown. And again, when you sign up, put in the code no label, all one word, and you will get three months completely free. Go win that $20,000 because you know you got the goods, you got the talent. You just got to make sure you submit. Peace. Before I get into this, I think a big problem is creativity exists across the board. There's artists of all forms not just visual, mm -hmm. right? Just like you referred to earlier. And I think the big problem is, is music is one of the few creative spaces where people don't have to actually earn the title of being an artist. Uh oh. Day one, <laughs> you got people out here, oh, because I'm a musician, I term determine. <laughs> that I'm an artist, right? I see myself as an artist and the world should acknowledge me as an artist and everything I should do should be consumed as such, right? Yeah, I agree. But when you go look at the guy who creates code, you know what? He's creating code. That's the kin to being, that's the same as being a musician. That's the technical aspect. I'm learning how to create the technical aspect. Yeah. That is a part of the science and the technique, but it's not until you transcend that level Right, that you're so good at the technique, you're able to express yourself easily and purely, like in a way that's not obstru uh, obstructed by the formalities of the technique. That people start to look at you as an artist. You'll you'll hear when you go into uh, the the tech spaces, they're like, "Oh yeah, no, this guy's a, a, like a next level coder. Like he's so creative. Like this guy's basically an artist." Right? You will hear people look at Steve Jobs and speak of him more as an artist and designer. Right? than just a businessman because of he got so good at it and the way he was approaching and the way he viewed the world and bringing products to market, right? Like there's so many other types of artists, but those other fields, they don't get the benefit of the doubt and just through proof over time, levels of success in their approach, do they get acknowledged as some sort of creative beyond their field versus if you're a musician, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just an artist because I'm a musician. And how many times, artist, do y'all hear another quote unquote artist and y'all think their music is trash? Y'all don't think they're a good artist. So, like, it creates this space where I think artists end up not acknowledging the entire process. That's all I I want I want to say to that. But, yeah. but, but like, let's get to the, um, these points. And I would love to hear what y'all y'all think to that. Um, but I could go deeper on that. But he says, however, most artists see it from an artistic lens. I'm going to try and explain where artists are coming from as best as possible. So from a marketing standpoint, content creation is the obvious thing to do to get an artist out there. But let's say marketing is the NBA. Okay. All right. If y'all don't know the NBA, that is a basketball league, a professional basketball league. And he says the NBA does all of the marketing and promotion. They put asses in the seats. Fair point. That is what the NBA does, not the players. Now I'm going to break down the artistic point of view. Artists don't see themselves as the NBA. They see themselves as Kobe Bryant, the athlete, the star. I think that's a beautiful analogy, right? I really do. Artists see their craft the way the athlete would artists see their craft the way an athlete sees his craft. They all want to be the best at their craft and want to drop the best art they possibly can. So in other words, artists are too busy doing reps at their craft the way an athlete is too busy practicing to win the next game. Music they're satisfied with is the result they strive to achieve. Marketing is the NBA that puts them in front of eyes. So in conclusion, to better explain, marketing people see artists as the NBA brand, but most artists don't see themselves as the NBA. They see themselves as the player. Therefore, when someone says an artist is entitled and don't want to do the work, it's like telling an athlete 
who you can see is top tier, telling them you're not putting any work in because you don't record yourself playing basketball. All right. That's the best I could explain it. And I appreciate you explaining it that way, man. That was a beautiful analogy. But here are some of the things that I have to say to that. Got to break down. Got to break this down. <laughs> Marketing is the NBA. The players, the basketball players are the artists. And you don't ever really see the basketball players doing the primary marketing of the NBA. Very fair point. Although what has happened today, we are in a completely new era where the basketball players have wanted to escape the NBA and take control of their own narrative. LeBron started interrupted, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant started boardroom. Uh, Draymond Green started a podcast Jeff Teague had a crazy viral take the other day <laughs> on, a pod, on a podcast of his own saying Michael Jackson can't sing, right? That because he has his own platform, they are looking for platforms so they can own their own marketing, own their own narrative. For one, so one, they're fighting to create content when the NBA doesn't even care in many cases, want them to create content like that because they feel like that's keeping them from doing their job in some cases, right? So one, uh, people are coming from a whole nother perspective on that side than you would think in this particular era. Moreover, this is where everything breaks down for you. The, the NBA players still have the NBA, but artists, y'all fought, fought to get rid of the NBA. All the labels. Y'all didn't want the record labels. Yeah. And I'm not saying that wasn't a good thing, right? Like the, the record labels, there needed to be more equity in the artist record label relationship. Yep. But to be independent means you don't have the NBA. Yep. It's going to be harder. It comes with more responsibility. That's just the game that you are now in. Now, I know many of our artists are like, I don't want to be independent. It's just like that conversation you see in relationships. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to be independent and be by myself. I want to be in a relationship. I want a partner. I want love. Like, I get it. <laughs> right. But then how hard is it to find the right one? Right. Oof. So we know that many of y'all do want partnership and y'all don't want to have have to do all of those things alone. Right. Go shopping for the groceries, take care of the kids, get dressed, get the kids dressed, still working nine to five. Uh, right? Making breakfast. Oh, my God. <laughs> like do all these things alone. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You want a partner to go through life and take some of the burden off of you. All right. Some of them. Some of them. But then we know, yes, some of them partners will create burden, finesse you, mess your life up. Mm -hmm. And this is the era we live in. But first, let's start. At least you have a choice. Right. Or yep. before there was less choice, yep. nearly no choice. And this is where we fall back on. You talked about musicians that are pretty much the ones you describe are typically backup musicians. You could just go find a band to play for. Mm -hmm. All right. Or you or can studio, just, or, or studio musician. Yeah. Or you can make music for the love at the house. Do some concerts. Uh, you know, around the town or play at your child's, you know what I mean, recital or something like that. Like there's different ways to create music and still like get out your artistic expression. But the moment you decide that you want an audience and build a business around it, now you're caught just like us. Man, I want to have a business, but boy, this content thing. Y'all think Gary V? Did all that content, 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 content stuff, and all his messaging was just targeted at artists? That's that is the smallest part of his fan base, probably. He you you can see him talking to real estate companies, create content. Y'all yeah. need to create content. Coca-Cola, yeah. y'all need to create social media content. This is not an artist-specific initiative. So, yes, artists, you are the player and the NBA for unfortunately. Yeah, and the thing I, I disagree with about this take, okay, and it's something that's brought up that people love to do when they make these type of points. So they always bring up artists, and in this case, athletes from yesteryear, mm -hmm. and use them as a blueprint. Right? He mentioned the Kobe Bryant thing. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and cap like I'm a super sports head, like Sean is. Like I already see Sean waiting to, to jump on some shit I say wrong, 
I just want to see where you're going. <laughs> I just want to see where you're going. But I will make the argument that there are athletes today who the the only reason they are as influential as they are is because they they did take time to step off the court to do some of these things we weren't used to seeing athletes athletes do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right. And it's like, so he made the point, right? NBA, the NBA wants asses in the seats. I think and it's a good mm-hmm. analogy with labels, mm-hmm. right? Because we tend to think, yo, the labels want the best music artists. It's not the case. Mm-hmm. The same way we can make the argument, like, hey, the NBA may want the best basketball players. I would make a case sometimes of, like, the athlete that can bring more fans into the the, the court or the, the 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 stadium is more valuable than than the objectively better athlete, because I can quantify I can quantify it a little bit man. better. <laughs> no, nah, you in the right place, man. <laughs> you in the right place, and you triggering a lot of stuff right now. I tell many of y'all might not be aware of this right now. This is a conversation as of last week. I'm gonna actually I want to get the details right. I'm gonna look up the name in college football right now. There is a huge controversy. Okay. All right. A lot of hubbub being made because Florida State University has been snubbed, quote unquote, by not being allowed to compete for a championship. So let me explain this system and artists, y'all will understand. Trust me. And then we'll get into some some other um, analogies. The college system, all right, because they aren't like just the NBA, where it's one league. Right, and it's clear mm-hmm. where everybody can kind of play each other. You can bracket it up. It's not, hey, who wins and who beats everybody? All of a sudden, you are at the championship. You can literally win every single game and not necessarily go to the championship. You got to think it's so many different teams, so many different leagues. Which league is a or which conference is a stronger conference? There's so many questions to be asked, right? Because mm-hmm. you can't play everybody. So, Florida State University went undefeated. And they were not chosen to be able to play as a part of the national championship. Keyword chosen. Mm. They believe they should have been chosen. However, some points that got made were, for one, some people don't believe the conference is stronger. The SEC is often argued as the most strong conference, period, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people think there's a bias towards the SEC and people think SEC teams are better. You can have somebody be undefeated in another conference, but they're not as good as a team in the SEC. And a lot of times that does prove right where like an SEC team that's not like top of their conference will like kill a team in another conference, Mm -hmm. right? Like bad. Okay. Here's the other point though. It's chosen. So if I'm on the board now – I'm sorry, young college players. Y'all are introduced to the world of business. <laughs> this Alabama team that y'all don't think should have been in y'all's place, they got a bigger brand name a little bit, like as of late, because they've gone on this run over the last decade, maybe decade and a half at this point. Their coach is a greater household name, and coaches make games way more in college than any other, like, part of the professional sports. The coaches got the name because they're the consistent ones. College Uh, players go in. You know, they come and go. Their image couldn't even be out there, right? Yeah. So the best team, maybe, right, like isn't even getting an opportunity to play in the championship. That's Florida's point because they don't put asses in seats to the same level, which would be part of the board's argument. They're not going to ever say that straight up, but people are kind of like, yo, bro, this is the business. That's what it comes down to, Mm -hmm. all right? So even in sports, especially when you add a massive variety of people, all right, just like music. Now, you can't just have one little competition and say who's better than who. It's way too many people, way too many genres, way too many different opinions. Mm -hmm. Case in point there. Secondly, getting your value is always going to come from other people perceiving your value and you have to be able to make them perceive that value. That's your responsibility. So if you look at Deion Sanders, another sports individual, yep. there's no way we should know who Deion Sanders is like the people who do know him because he's a defensive player. You probably can't even name another defensive player on in football that you know their name like that, like that. And Ja'Cory is the first person to ask because he's not crazy deep in the football. 
So who's somebody? I ain't, I ain't got nobody. Name an offensive uh, football player. I don't know, like fucking Tom Brady. Tom Brady, there you go. You had a name. <laughs> you know what I mean? Name a second one. Drew Brees. Damn, you know Drew Brees. <laughs> See, this is the power of offense. <laughs> this this is the and this is makes a point, right? It's so hard to be known on defense. He knows Drew Brees, which is nowhere near the level of go of like a Deion Sanders <laughs> and many other defensive players. Which Drew Brees is a he he's a he's a solid like real. Yeah, appreciate it, man. I, I, I had to, I had to yeah. dig deep for that one. But the, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna go Mike Vick or something. But like that's you know. But like that's but. The reason that's so important is Deion Sanders, if you go look through his, his story, he specifically created the character of Deion Sanders to market himself. Like primetime, that character. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in okay, college. Yeah, yeah. I got to get my mom about the hood. I can see that offensive players don't get paid like defensive players do. I'm going to create this character Right, I'm getting in rap videos. I'm doing all these different things mm -hmm. to cr make my name a household name, mm -hmm. so I can put asses in seats. I can bring people's eyeballs to commercials. Right, he created the value perception, despite the fact that it's already there. Like on the field, as a performance, you're going to get a certain level of of money because of your performance. There is that level, especially in sports, but to supersede and get everything that you personally think you're worth. Mm, that's your work to do. Yeah, and, and see, and I, I like that example too, because it, it it's showing that there's someone who hit a level where we can assume that they were, if not at the highest level, like damn near close. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you are you are either at a hundred percent or you are at ninety-nine point nine. And the argument I always make with content and, and even that side of it is that is differentiating point. If you are for sure better than other people, that's that's how you break through. Yes. If you're in a room with other people who are equally yoked as you, like if I if if you if you're the best artist on your in your block, and and that's nobody can even dispute that. That's one thing. But if I take you and put you in a room with 10 other really good artists, mm -hmm. now what becomes a differentiating thing besides the brand and the way that you're presenting yourself? Now that's how I start to to, to piece y'all together, you know what I'm saying, or separate y'all. Yeah, you talk about that next level goat. Yeah. Level. It's like you're so much better than people, all of a sudden everybody who don't even know about swimming know who Michael Phelps is. Yeah, that's a great point. Actually. What was the bike, the bike nigga? You know what I'm talking about, bro? Oh, Lance Armstrong. Lance I Armstrong, bro. Exactly, bro. Exactly, bro. <laughs> like, who, who? And I know zero other bikers. None, bro. I couldn't, I couldn't gun to my head right now. I couldn't name another biker. To bro. the point that we're calling them <laughs> bikers, and I know that's not even the official term. Oh, cyclists, you're right. Cyclists. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's so it's like there, there, there's a point where, you know, we we talk about content from the, the standpoint of getting discovered, and I still stand on that. Talent will get you. The opportunity to create opportunities, usually content and how you expose yourself is what will actually create the opportunity. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. a lot of times the people that are given opportunities are only paying attention if there's a certain like skill set or quality level there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I'm Coke looking for a nigga to put the, the, the next song on some of my Coke add on, I'm in theory, going to only be looking at artists that make good music, at least to the standard of their music supervisor. So now I'm looking for other things that make me go, oh, I should go with this guy, right? And it just so happens, you know, it just so happens that music is entertainment. And one of the things in entertainment that will always supersede talent, always for the front since the dawn of time, is who can bring the most people out to this thing. You know what I'm saying? In fact. order for you to do that, you got to talk to people. And so that's what my point was with the Kobe example is like, yeah, Kobe wasn't making like content in terms of what content was like today. But if you go and look at, you know, 80s, the, the 90s and 2000s, like their version of content back then was doing interviews and, you know what I'm saying, and, and popping up on these different networks and things to talk. He was 100% doing that. You know what I'm and saying? And <laughs> the reason Kobe, part of the reason Kobe is Kobe name wise is because he played for the Lakers, which is an organization that is 
the most dedicated to entertainment and basketball. Hundred percent, bro. Like I remember being in middle school, them niggas sending out like sticker packs and you know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy, like these crazy, crazy brand activations that I remember like when the Hawks started to get into being like that. But for the longest time, yeah, like you really saw like the the Lakers like ran that shit, bro. Like, Showtime. Was, like, nobody was competing with them there. So it's like there's there's always these examples and even even the most high level of any creative of whatever niche you can think of, whatever vertical you want to look at, the ones that really, really hit that peak from a culture standpoint and break through, they always do these other things that they shouldn't have to do to be good at their craft. Now, there are people yes. in, there's a motherfucker right now that would put his nuts on LeBron forehead. <laughs> 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 okay, and why would he do such a thing? Cause he fought, bro. He 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 doing his thing, bro. He been he been playing in the street league. You know okay, what I'm playing basketball. Yeah, but yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> playing basketball, but we <laughs> don't care about him or her because all of the other things that have made us come to life, <laughs> Brian, are in place. Just like there's a musician out there yeah. right now. There's a rapper right now that could probably out rap Drake. Yeah. You see it all the time. You will see, oh yeah, man, I know somebody who's better than Jordan, or I know somebody mm -hmm. who's better and rap better than Jay-Z just down the block or Drake or whoever. Yeah, you do see that all the time, which goes back to all of our points, man. I, I just the, the takeaway I want you guys to to take from this is one, you are not alone. All right. Literally, artists, y'all are not alone in having to create content to help create and bring business to we yourself. We all gotta do it. To get yourself discovered. You are not. It just simply is not true. Secondly, you have more responsibility today to do this marketing because that is a part of the responsibility of being an independent artist. All right? Like, those are the two things you understand. So, And once you have that and you don't personalize it to being this attack on you or thinking it's about attacking the art, all right, then you can step back Still have the frustrating and pain that comes with it. Yeah. We're not saying don't feel that. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying to help y'all understand <laughs> that regardless of your pain, this is a function of being an adult. You're adulting in your in your art, so you're growing <laughs> up. That's all it is. Now, of course, you find that right partner that can take some of that pain up off of you. Then beautiful. We all look for those partners. Pe business people look to find those partners over time that can help in the same way. There was one more comment. I wondered, um, was that on this video? I think it was. That's important for y'all to hear. Basically, Mr. Mean Man <laughs> says, <laughs> so you travel thousands of miles at a restaurant because they have content? I don't think so. There are lots of great chefs in Kansas, but no one is flying from New York to eat at them. If you go to Keith Lee's content, just as one person, per, uh, person's example, he is a food reviewer. I've literally seen people in the comments like, yo, I live in Japan. I can't wait to go to Atlanta to try this place that you just showed. Or I'm going to go here next summer. Like, you see those comments. People will see something and they will travel around the world for things. People got different lives and circumstances. Bruh. But like, just like I will go down the block. Some people's down the block is a, a few states away. Exactly, bro. I, I give you an even better example. Okay. Fucking Salt Bay. The Miami chef. Nigga that went viral that from dude? Yeah, bro. Yeah, he yeah. has a restaurant in Miami. Mm. His shit got lit after that meme uh started yes. going crazy. Now You're you right. can make the argument of, like he didn't make the content. You could you could make the argument, but content is the thing that got hella motherfuckers to go to his restaurant. That's right. Like and like we said at the top of the part, I've literally seen restaurant tours be created from motherfuckers that just have some free time to show their recipes on TikTok. And then, you know, a year go by and they got cookbooks and opening restaurants in their hometown and the audience is talking about traveling. So it's like, yes, bro, if your food is that good and you can find a way to showcase it, it to me, I'll find a way to get there. Or if I can't find a way to get there, I'm gonna keep it top of mind for if I ever have, if I ever, if I seen a TikTok from a five restaurant in Kansas, and I, for whatever reason, ended up in Kansas, the first place I'm going to. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I put my bags down, let me pull up this TikTok real quick, because I remember seeing this one crazy restaurant on TikTok. That's that's how consumer brain thinks, and it, it applies to everything, bro. Because now I'm somewhere that I don't know anything about, so I'm definitely going to go to the one place I actually saw and heard of. Bro, and that's the other thing. Like, what do people, what, what does this user think 
people are getting their restaurant recommendations from. Well, who looking at the yellow pages? Like who we I don't I don't look at those like state restaurant guys that'd be at like the, the truck stops mm-hmm. and shit. I'm going straight to TikTok. If I go to a new place, ooh, I went to El Paso, Texas for the first time in January this year. Crazy. Never had any reason to be in El Paso, <laughs> Texas except for the reason I was out there for. I was in my my Airbnb hungry and I thought about asking the lady that ran the Airbnb or what's some good food spots. And I was like, no, TikTok. Went to TikTok, find a fire little bar, and I was happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was lit. And I can assume that I'm not the only one <laughs> that there thinks like is. that. So, yeah, man, that was a terrible argument. And the guy, there was a guy that made this first comment. We didn't read his comment. And I tagged Gordon Ramsay, and he never said anything back. So I just wanted <laughs> that to be known that, you know, there are, there are restaurant niggas making content. So, <laughs> and this is, this is a perfect place to end it, right? <laughs> the answer to the question Will somebody travel across the world? Will they go far and wide just because they found a piece of content to try your food? The yes. answer is yes. Yes. And the same applies to your music. Yep, 100%. And do you not want people traveling far and wide to see you? Do you not know that people went to Paris who lived in Atlanta to see Beyonce? Facts. I, I know at least two. Do y'all not know people went <laughs> to Toronto who live in Atlanta to see Beyonce? Yep. All right. If that's what you want for yourself, all right, content is the way it happens these days. Are, are there not motherfuckers that went to the pergola full of Russell that came that came from we went from Atlanta? Oh yeah, the pergola. 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 What else? Yeah, like pergola? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Pergola. You sound like that. You sound like that interview. Oh, who was that? <laughs> who just said the word different? I forgot who that was. Oh, uh, ah, fuck. Florida rapper. Florida? No. Florida rapper, not Florida. Oh, my bad. I mean, technically. <laughs> but uh, Kodak? Yes, Kodak. Uh. <laughs> that word he messed up. But anyway, <laughs> we, we are out of here. <laughs> we would love to know what y'all think. Drop a comment below. Peace.